The past is your playground. Abstergo. Hello, Initiate. Recently, Abstergo Historical Research began several new projects in London. We both know that when Abstergo makes big moves, the Templars are up to something. We think they're hot on the trail of a new piece of Eden. I've got people in London looking for it. Hey, Bishop! Jacob and Evie Fry are twins. How awesome is that? Speak of the devil. Fire up your cameras, Beck. I've got a picture. ETA on the payload? Sending it now. A lot to sift through. I'm gonna get the initiates on it ASAP. You look weird with a weapon. Let's plant a little bug and see what we can see. Got something. Isabel Ardant has a meeting here in a few hours. Uh, doesn't say with who. Doesn't say with whom, Rebecca. I suppose it's down to Muggins here to find out. Hold on. The mission was to find data to locate a piece of Eden in London. We did. And now I am eager to try this new kit. I don't like it when those two go off book like this. Well, all we can do is take a deep breath and move forward. You'll be searching for the piece of Eden through the lives of Jacob and Evie Fry. Twin assassins who operated in Victorian London. Your first set of genetic memories are downloaded. Good luck. Brother George, it is as I feared. London has fallen. Thrice I have written to you, begging your aid. Thrice you've responded with silence. And yet I write again. So desperate my need, so few my options. I need you. London needs you. You would say it is too great of a task, or that it is not yet time to strike. Patience, you would counsel. But whilst you wait, the Templars consolidate their power. They have chosen a Grand Master so ruthless, so thorough, one might think Reginald Birch himself had returned. His name is Crawford Starrick, and he intends to rule the world. There is no aspect of society he does not control, no industry that escapes his grim touch. By day, it is corrupt merchants and venal politicians who hold court. Come night, a vicious street gang known as the Blighters strikes terror in the hearts of all. There is no business untainted by his poison, no person unexploited, be it by duplicity or force. Our enemy has designs on the highest office of them all. And so, as you look inward, and dare I say it, afraid, Crawford Starrick's ambition is fixed on the beyond, to kingdoms and continents as yet unconquered, though not for long, for he knows. As I have warned you time and time again, whosoever controls London, controls the world. The iron ships from here. The Templar running things is Rupert Ferris and our target one. Target two is Sir David Brewster, who's got his hands on a bauble that could ruin us in this wretched war. Think you both can handle it? What a question. All oh, right. My mistake. Ladies and gentlemen, the unstoppable Fry twins. See them nightly at Covent Garden. George, honestly, I've studied the plans of the laboratory and have every route covered. And I've got all I need right here. I'll extend your regards to Ferris. Chat later, George. We have a train to catch. Jacob! Evie! May the creed guide you, you vagrants! Poor man. More afraid than ever. The years have not been kind. Evie Fry, where do you get it from? 
the same place as you, Jacob. Have fun. <laughs> Don't die. some laudanum for my head. Coming right up. And yet here you are, shouting like a bunch of French revolutionaries. And what do you hope to achieve by blockading the factory doors? The machine Locked. What do you think you're doing? Stop now! For this trouble! No one goes in or out, unless there's a problem. I hold the machines. That door opens, and I have my route to Ferris. I swear it, he's telling the truth. Oh, ah! oh shit. This Who are you? The sanitary inspector. This man is dead. You're the dead man! Run along home, boy. Here we go. Yard. Guard quarters. Bruce's laboratory. This is where the piece of Eden will be located. No loose ends. Now, did a couple the locomotive and create a diversion. Well, where is it? Huh? Where's Brewster's supplies? Meter. to deploy the diversion. like Jacob's cooking. That should keep you busy while I head into your lab. Mr. Ferris, sir, the... Uh, the lad in the factory should be taken to be bandaged by the apothecary. Fine, but dock his wages. Yes, sir. Shall we arrive at a final price, Mr. Ferris?
continue to generate a steady profit. It is done. Oh? What did you accomplish, boy? A bolt loosened in Starrick's machine. A large bolt, but not enough. Your Grandmaster will fall. You assassins can circle London to your heart's content. The mechanism we have built has been going strong for a hundred years, and will run a thousand more. It is the very city itself. We will take London from your hands. From Croydon? You lurk in the shadows like a coward. I doubt it. We seem to have made an unscheduled stop. Maybe next time I'll walk. I need two more weeks with the device. Your questionable practices are beginning to draw unwanted attention. You have been given more than enough time to achieve results, Sir David. I was unaware that you expected me to perform like a cocker spaniel. Permit me to remind you of your obligation to the Order. Miss Thorne, you ride me like a racehorse. Sir David, I will return tomorrow. If you have not unlocked the device's secrets, forget your dogs and horses. I will leave you to the wolves. Good day. I was merely promised a tour of the premises, my lords. Who sent you? It's one of green spies. Get that man to interrogation. Then I want him brought to the lab. What a pity. But no deviations from the mission.
Nearly there. Brewster's laboratory. All reconnaissance pointed straight here. How did you break into the laboratory? The entrance is hidden. A secret laboratory? Well, well. Perhaps I can aid this interrogation. Henry Green! Who's that messing around? Thank you kindly. I was in ever such a squeaky fix when, what do you know? You rescue me. Where's the hidden laboratory? Untie me and then we can parlay, my lady. I'm pressed for time. Tell me now. It's underground. Requires a key. One of the guards nicked mine, cheeky sod. Thank you. Uh, now, untie me? You got yourself in. I trust you can get yourself out again. Not to worry, my lady. Can still recall a couple of tricks from me carnival days. Charming. What a giant. What the hell? Go downstairs into the passage, all quiet like. It ain't worth it. Got it. of Eden. Increase the electricity. 
What did it become unstable, sir? You heard what Miss Thorne said. We need results now. Time to lay down your head, Sir David Brewster. But I have so much more to discover. Do not be afraid. I'm not. God will protect me. I will continue your experiment. You will not stop, Staric. Miss Thorne has already found another piece of Eden, more powerful than the last. I will take that one, too. We fight to gain what we cannot take with us. It's in our nature. That explosion. What explosion? EV. Piece of Eden detonated and took the lab with it. The magic lump of hyperbolic metal. I'm shocked. Simply because you have never valued the pieces does not All mean... went according to plan, hmm? <clears throat> there was a slight complication. How slight? The lab exploded. Jacob. You derailed a train. Oh, he did. Did he? Well, the train derailed and I happened to be on it. I killed my target. Brewster is also no more. Then all in all a successful mission in spite of you two. What about London? What about it? We're wasting our time out here. You know as well as I do that London has been the domain of the Templars for the last hundred years. They are far too strong yet. Patience. But the Templars have found a new piece of Eden. Sir David is dead. They do not know how to use it. The Council shall guide us. Sound advice that your father would have seconded. I shall see you back in Crawley. Patience, Evie. Ah, oh, the gentle sound of opportunity passing us by. So what's stopping us? London is waiting to be liberated. Forget Crawley. Father would have wanted us to listen. Oh, Father. You could continue his legacy in London. Freeing future generations from a city ruled by Templars. You know, Jacob Fry, you might just be right. Then shall we? Yes. Let's. Onward to London. <laughs> Sean and Rebecca. I still think attacking a Templar is a mistake. Call Dr. Grammatica. Uh, come on. Where is Isabel? What a lovely surprise. Our mutual friends will be here shortly to search for the artifact. Once it's located, I'll let you know. Super. Always a pleasure. Prick. 
It's people like you that give historians a bad name. I'm afraid I don't have time for you today, Mr. Hastings. Thank you for making my job easy. Oh, shit. It does look grim. Masterberg, Agent Acosta. Deal with them, please. Move it! Hunt them down! All they had to do was wait for you to search the data. Their little stunt has put the whole operation at risk. You need to synchronize Jacob and Evie's memories. Find something that puts us ahead of the enemy. Time is of the essence, and lives are now clearly on the line. Good luck. I've never seen so many people all at once. <laughs> Churning seas of London. It's just the way Father described. Now, to find Henry Green and formulate a plan of attack against the Templars. Is Mr. Green again? The assassin watching over London? Did you not listen the first three times? Listen to what? <laughs> Oi, watch it. Ben pardon, sir. Oi! Come back here, you filthy dipper! Stop! You little mobsman. Keep it. Well, well. What do we have here? You're on our property. Finish him off. I'll go for a drink. Excellent. What else does London have to offer? Now is not the time for tourism, Jacob. Now's the time to find Henry Green. I've always been the quicker climber, haven't I? Not since we were two. Race you to the highest vantage point. You're going to lose again. Not on my watch. I just had these trousers clean. Is Mr. Green's shop located? It was marked on Father's map. Two assassins, equal in height, one female, one male, two decades old, and those devilish smiles. You must be the Fry Twins. And you are? Henry Green, at your service. I was sorry to learn about your father's passing. Thank you. What can you tell us about Crawford Starrick? I suppose the Council desires news. London must be freed to provide a better future for all of its citizens. Well, thank goodness the Council saw reason and sent you to aid us. Yes. Thank goodness. Unfortunately, I am the bearer of bad news. Today, Starrick sits at the helm of the most sophisticated Templar infrastructure known in the Western world. Every class, every borough, the gangs, the industries, his reach extends all across London. I've always thought of myself as a gang leader. Firm, but fair. Huh. Well, I have uniforms. And I'll unite a mix of disenfranchised outsiders under one name. That's it, Evie. We can rally them to our side. Oh, like the way that you rallied those car players at the Oakbrook Tavern into the river. Oh, that was different. They beat me at whist. I can see it now. We'll call ourselves the Rooks. You're never good at chess, either. Have you got a better plan? Find the piece of Eden. Oh, well, let me show you the lay of the land. Shall we? Look at what Starrick has done to the city. Whitechapel is riddled with crime. Child labor, despite regulations. 
A gang known as the Blighters overruns the streets, and Templars manipulating behind the scenes. As in all the other boroughs, we need to return this city to the people who built it in the first place. We will free London from Starrick. You have my word. And my works. Miss Fry, your passion is inspiring. Come. Let us return to my shop, and I can bring you up to date on the rest. Confound this city! No one looks where they're going! Yes, I've noticed that. Bloody drood! I'll never finish it at this rate. Only Providence knows where those words are headed now. Well, I must get to work replacing them. Should you ever be in the mood for a tale or two, you can always find me where the ale is warm and tempers are hot. Ta-ta! What an odd man. That Mr. Fry was Charles Dickens. Knows everyone and everything in the city. If I were you, I would keep that connection in your back pocket. <clears throat> Kaylock's gang is nearby. They must not follow me back to my shop. We'll take care of it. Yeah. You might be able to use this. Oh, God, I hope so. My carriage is nearby. Make use of it to throw them off my trail. I will meet you at the curio shop. Steady on. We need to lead them away from Green. Here comes trouble. Their carriages are easily damaged. Kaylock will ruin. They've gone. Now to return to Mr. Green. Aye, aye, Captain. You're relentless. That relentlessness will see me become master when we finish this. George would do nothing of the sort. Whatever's left of the creed would perish under your control. Harsh words, dear sister. Whoa, now! I do hope Mr. Green made it back safely. Don't tell me you fancy the bloke already. And what do you suggest we do if our number one source of information turns up dead? Starry can't be that hard to find. I say we turn the carriage around and go find him. This is why you aren't in charge. Let's go. Whoa! Did you give them the slip? We gave them more than that. <laughs> Who are all these people? Over the years, I have established a number of connections across the city. Splendid. We'll need focused aid. Focused aid? <sighs> we take over Starrick's gangs, we cripple his control. You're not aiming high enough. Starrick has influence in every branch of society. We need to match him. I see what you're saying, Evie. We need the Rooks. You are not starting a gang called the Rooks. I believe I may have an idea of my own. We will need the police to turn a blind eye to our activities. My ally in the force, Sergeant Abilene. I've heard he's a master of disguise. I don't see Mr. Abelard. Well, we tried. Psst. I may know a thing or two about that splendid fellow you're talking about. What's this? Are you trying to blow the gaff? What? Sergeant Abelard, at your service. I presume you're the Fry Twins Green mentioned. I was expecting you to be a policeman. I was expecting you to be discreet. Henry Green said that you could help us go unnoticed. This is how it will work. I will give you the names of criminal gang members. You will bring them back to me. Quietly. Oh, we'll be as quiet as an old lady. A very hairy, strange old lady that looks a lot like a policeman. Next up. Urchins. 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 Children make for excellent spies. Clara O'Day. Smart as a whip, that one. What is this place? It's nice to meet you both at last. This is Babylon Alley. Here, we make it our business to know the streets and provide children with the opportunity to control their own destinies. Clara, Mr. Green said we might be able to help one another. In exchange for our services, we ask a small favor. Well, why not? You seem to have taken most of my money. Why not take a small favor, too? There are several factories about the city that are powered almost entirely by child labor. Those children work long hours with little pay, and most are not permitted even to leave the factory grounds. They suffer terribly. 
I need you to save them. A small favor. In return, we offer you intelligence. Something you clearly need. Oh, hold on a minute. I'm late for an appointment. What are these terms? We accept. <laughs> Pleasure doing business with you. Finally, you would be wise to remember that Staric never acts alone. There are gang leaders in every borough. You'll meet them soon enough, no doubt. Rexford Gaylock, known for his ability to vanish before your very eyes. Should we make him vanish for real? I suppose. One moment. Um, a Templar target you might want to look into. Uh, be cautious. It's rough out there. No, don't worry about me, Greeny. I can handle a few thugs. Ah, there you are. All that stands between you and Whitechapel is the villain controlling the borough. Gaylock has demanded you settle the claim for territory in a gang fight. His loss? <laughs> Here. I'm sure you can put this to better use than I can. Oh, what's this, Greeny? Assassin Christmas. <laughs> Gather your allies. Mr. Rexford Kaylock has agreed to your terms and waits for you at the Whitechapel train station. He's bet his train on the fight. Where are you, Kaylock? Perhaps this will draw you out. Rux! Two arms! to be broken. Oh well, at least we have a train now. It's not all bad. Kaylock is dead! Whitechapel is no longer in the hands of the Blighters! You now have the chance to join our ranks! We welcome all who would stand up to Steric and his cutthroats! I'd rather throw myself to the tracks than run Bertha another mile for that dirty bow bag. Kaylock? <laughs> He's left the station. Mel! Hello, fancy pants. And who might you I'm Evie be? Fry, and this is my brother, Jacob Fry. Pleased to meet you. I'm Agnes McBean. A delight. I thought I was getting a promotion. I suppose I'm out of work now. Come work for us instead. <laughs> I won't bail your heat. You pay better than scraps? Oh, I'm sure we can at least match that. Then may I present to you Agnes and Bertha, lady and locomotive, at your service. I'll be in the next car. A hideout on the rails? What an excellent idea. Yes, it all worked out rather well. Now, I would like to follow up a lead on... Jacob? Is this serious? I'm not doing anything until this gets fixed. I believe I know someone who can help with that. I knew you would, Greeny. Oh, 
Oh, blast them. Alec, whatever is the matter? I have been intercepting nothing but poppycock propaganda about soothing, syrup and whatnot. No, I swear to high heavens, if Starrick's monopoly continues... Alec, I beg your pardon. These are friends of mine. Evie Fry and her brother, Jacob. Oh, um... Alexander Graham Bell. Linguist, inventor and technical expert. Alec, I have something of a favor to ask you. Can you fix this? Oh, looks like the casing is cracked. Oh, comes apart. <laughs> I see. Could have used one of these to fit my fuses on top of Big Ben. Alec is installing a new telegraph line for our Free Press Association. To combat the Static Telegraph Company. Now, if I can mend the fuses connecting independent lines from Big Ben, Static will be weakened. Only we are somewhat at a handicap. And there. Yeah. Oh, I've removed the mechanism, so it may work with your bracer. I'll put it to use immediately. Jacob, wait. Mr. Bell, allow me to help you with your fuses. Oh, you will not find me too proud to accept Miss Fry. Oh, uh, we can use my carriage, if you'd be so good as to hold the reins, though. I'll take that. Um, I, I can help you. So, Mr. Bell, what inventions are you concocting? I intend to develop a phonetic telegraph that does not just convey dots and dashes, Miss Fry, what but the human voice. Phonetic telegraph? Hmm. Sounds a bit of a mouthful. You could just call it a telephone. Telephone? <laughs> How bizarre. Anyway, as I was saying earlier, the press has become entirely dependent on the Static Telegraph Company. Which is why Mr. Green has asked you to set up a free line. Yes. What is more, other small independent companies have had their lines sabotaged, and they have little means of finding any broken fuses, which are... To be found on top of Big Ben. Correct. Especially as one needs a special government pass to get through the guards. They will not be a problem. I'll repair the fuses. <laughs> Lovely view. Miss Fry, uh, I was just showing Jacob the first message was received via the mended lines. Oh, uh, you can keep the rope launcher, by the way. Um, we've managed to procure another one for your brother. Excellent work. Thank you again. You're very welcome, Mr. Bell. We can now defend the principle of impartial news and free speech. Free is fair, but free and brief is far better. Ha <laughs> ha! Ah, Fry, such caustic wit. <laughs> And on that note, we must depart. <laughs> oh, uh, good fortune to you both. Uh, call on me at any time. Now that we've finished with that distraction... Who is that? Oh, you mean you don't know? Beautiful train you got here. Miss McBean was just telling me all about her. Name's Ned. How do you do? I won't take up more of your time. Uh, if you want to learn a thing or two about the finest transit systems in the world, you can find me at this address. 
Let us return to locating the Peace of Eden. We need to reclaim London from Staric. Who are my targets? It's not time for that yet. I didn't come to London to hunt curios. First understand the dance, only then become the dancer. Oh, so you're taking over where father left off. Someone has to. Evie, finding the precursor artifact will give us an insight into what the Templars intend. Jacob, I have information about Starek's associates that should be of use to you. Here. This soothing syrup has become the only medicine available in Lambeth. It bears the Templar Grandmaster's name. About time for a visit to the doctor. I don't see that cure arriving anytime soon. And what exactly will you be doing, might I ask? You know very well. Tracking down the Peace of Eden. Enjoy your studies. I'll be out killing Templars. Get Starek's soothing syrup right here! It's all he drinks! Your syrup is liquefying him. He's turning him simple-headed. Now, look now. You are scaring away my customers. Why don't you bugger off, or I'll give you something to remember me by. Oh, you can't talk to me like that, you little guttling. What's all this, then? Oh, sod off. If you'll excuse me, madam. The syrup originates. Oh, all I'm hoping is they make a run each day between the gasometers of the asylum. Who's a good horse? You are. Walk on, girl. That's the way. The man in charge of the syrup distribution runs a fighting club at the foundry. Syrup, mate. What's all that? Speak now or forever hold your. The distillery. It's the large building beside the brewery. Now, to stop soothing syrup production once and for all.
a sharp eye out, lads. Someone's targeting our network. The distillery might be next. about frightening respectable gentlemen, young man. I didn't realize snooping around was considered gentlemanly. Snooping? Sir, I assure you. Keep vigilant. Quick, inside. That was too close a call. You, young man, gave me quite a fright. I thought you were one of them. But I realize now why you're here. Same reason I am, I imagine. I imagine? I believe I found something, young man. A rather impressive contraption, wouldn't you say? I've seen bigger. Stramonium, or Devil's Snare, as it is commonly called, that goes into the syrup and opium, no less. Revolting. Absolutely sickening. A favorable way to proceed, wouldn't you agree? Of here quickly. Well done, dear boy. Well done. Charles Darwin, delighted to make your acquaintance. Jacob Fry, the pleasure's all mine. <laughs> While you were busy wreaking havoc, I found this. It indicates that a sample of every batch has been sent to Lambeth Asylum. Oh, I wonder if it's visiting hours. Don't be so hasty, Mr. Fry. Many people work at Lambeth. You wouldn't want to attract unwanted attention. Mm. Where's the fun in that? Not every problem can be solved by blowing things sky high. Sometimes a little discretion is in order. It's getting late. I will meet you at the asylum to continue our investigation. Ah. 
Another exciting night home for Evie Fry. Just on my way out, actually. I found the piece of Eden. What's this one going to do, hmm? Heal the sick, deflect bullets, control the populace. They're dangerous objects, Jacob, especially in Templar hands. Oh, you sound exactly like father. If only. Lucy Thorne is expecting a shipment tonight. She's Starek's expert in the occult. I'm nearly certain she is receiving the piece of Eden Sir David Brewster mentioned. Sounds like fun. Mind if I join you? Promise you will stick to the mission. I swear. The contents of that box are worth more than your life and those of your entire family. Do you understand? Yes, Miss Thorne. Uh, careful there. And double the guard on that cart. Now, Miss Thorne, there's the matter of some uh, papers for Mr. Starrick. If you'll just come this way. Very well, but make it quick. Whatever it is she's after, it's in that chest. There are gunmen on the rooftops. Can you dispose of them before I reach the cart? I was hoping for a challenge. There he is! I think it's best we leave. What did you do? It's hardly the time for questions! Whoa! Come on! If you really want to fight, come over here! Jacob! Wait for the in my Stop it! Jacob, turn off! It's papers, Jacob! Documents, research! I have told you before, sir, I had nothing to do with that anonymous article. Nothing, I say. That is a lie, sir. And you know it. Bah, I don't have time for this nonsense. Nonsense? It is my name and reputation you have willfully besmirched, sir. My very name. Bah! <laughs> drive, damn you, drive! <laughs> that is Richard Owen! A vile, despicable wretch of a man! Really? I could have sworn you were close friends. Mr. Owen works at the asylum. He will know who made the syrup. Get him! Get him! Faster, you netwit! Faster! <laughs>
whatever Darwin is paying you, it's not worth it. Do you realize how much trouble you're in? None at all. But if you're trying to intimidate me, Ruffy, and you're wasting your time. I've always wondered how much of a beating this type of vehicle could take. Let's stop! The river Thames! Better speak now, old man! Stop! For pity's sake, stop or I will tell you everything I know! Dr. John Elliotson, he formulated the elixir. He's the man you want, not me. I beg you, good sir, stop this madness. Now, was that so hard? Yes. You may have not found a piece of Eden, but this material is invaluable. Look. It says the London assassins had found a shroud. The shroud of Eden is supposed to heal even the gravest injury. If the assassins had found something like this, surely father would have known. There must be something we're missing. Something only we can see. These look like directions. Are you coming? Fieldwork is not really my speciality. We found a clue to a precursor object. Don't you want to follow it? Put that way, one can hardly refuse. Do you know, I think this map may be taking us to the Kenway Mansion. Kenway? The pirate? Master assassin and pirate, yes. How much do you know about the Shroud of Eden? It's said to heal the sick. Popular myth is that it brings people back from the dead, but the assassin records say that's not true. I've never heard of one being in London, though. Do you really think Edward Kenway could have found one? He traveled extensively, so it's possible. But if he did, he kept it a closely guarded secret. But if it's true, what a find it would be. Indeed. I'm eager to find out myself. There you go. That's it. It's surprising that you haven't already searched the Kenway house. Edward's son, Haytham, joined the Templars. When he died, the house passed on to Haytham's sister. And in all your time in London, you didn't go and have a look around? Weren't even a little curious? Truly, I didn't expect to find anything there. We have no way of knowing how many times the buildings changed hands. I presumed Haytham would have had it stripped bare before he left. But if Miss Thorne thinks the shroud could still be there... If there's a vault, the Templars haven't found it yet. So the Templars owned a house with assassin treasures stored in it, and never located them. We must be better at hiding things than they are. There you go. unless you have news of the lost notebook. That makes getting in a challenge. You still intend to enter? If this is a Templar stronghold, it won't get any easier. Don't worry. We'll stay well away from Miss Lucy. Shall we? Can you check over there? Of course. Oh, she's an 
This should belong to the assassins. What are we looking for? I'm not quite sure. What are the Templars not seeing? Something only we can. Not enormously subtle, is it? Clearly, Kenway had a strong sense of spectacle. Assassins. Vault holes, vaults, the hidden key. This is it. You say you heard music. There was no opening there before. It's closing! Yes, I can see that. Help me block it. We need to find another way out. An entire vault, filled with assassin history, left behind once again. We'll just have to reclaim this one later, or find a better cachet. We? Oui. I thought you preferred to stay out of field work. I... I was thinking more of you and your brother. I, I shall provide uh, planning assistance from the train. Jacob's off marauding. There is a vacancy. Should you desire to broaden your horizons? Oh, well, Evie, I... Oh, well, Evie... I will think on it. You do that. Come, let's get above ground. Mr. Fry! I trust that you had a productive meeting with Mr. Owen? Oh, yes, we had a most wonderful chat. I found out the man behind Starrick's soothing syrup is John Elliotson. Dr. Elliotson, I haven't heard that name in a long while. He was a brilliant heart specialist until he became obsessed with phrenology and mesmerism. It ruined his career. Well, how shall we proceed? Oh, with all respect, Mr. Darwin, I believe I should proceed alone. After all, we wouldn't want to attract any unwanted attention. Sounds very wise. Good luck, my boy. Oh, and uh, Mr. Fry, should you find yourself with any free time, please do call on me.
Where would I find the doctor? As you've just witnessed, the application of too much pressure can sometimes result in unexpected outcomes. Unfortunately, it appears I've ruined the organ. Send up a cadaver. At once, Dr. Linson. Here it is, Doctor. <sighs> At last it ends. Yet I can only think of beginnings. A better tomorrow. Forged with the blood of visionaries. All I see is the blood of a lunatic. Do you truly believe murdering an old man will stop humanity's great architect? Crawford Sterrick has a glorious design for mankind. Designs are meant to be broken. Oh, you're a child. A child who believes he can solve all the world's woes with a flick of a blade. Have you ever pondered the consequences of your actions, Jacob Fry? Or did your father teach you nothing? Elliot's an expired, and soothing syrup production has ceased. Outrageous! Fry intends to endanger all of London at the hands of the mob. Or perhaps he doesn't intend much of anything at all. Thank He's you. simply content to dice with our lives. The asylum is shut up. Medical care throughout the city is in disarray. He does not, cannot understand the consequences of his actions. The man is clearly an anarchist! Gentlemen. This tea was brought to me from India, by a ship, and up from the harbor to a factory, where it was packaged and ferried by carriage to my door, unpacked in the larder and brought upstairs to me. All by men and women who work for me, who are indebted to me, Crawford Starrick, for their jobs, the time, the very lives they lead. They will work in my factories, and so too shall their children. And you come to me with talk of this Jacob Fry, this insignificant blemish who calls himself assassin? You disrespect the very city that works day and night so that we may drink this, this miracle, this tea. I'm nearing the end of my research. Our beloved London shall not suffer such a bothersome fool for much longer. And what of this sister I've heard of? Miss Fry. Miss Fry shall be gutted. Soon enough. Delicious. Sorry to interrupt, Initiate. Thought you'd like to know that Sean and Rebecca got away from Otsoberg. Berg runs a unit called Sigma Team. Violet DaCosta is his tech support. They've been hunting and killing assassins for a long time.
Thank God you're all right. Oh, tish tosh. It'll take more than a Templar super soldier to end the glorious saga of Sean Danger Hastings. I was talking to Rebecca. Right. Anyway, Berg's presence confirms it. The Peace of Eden is in London. The Initiate's data sync suggests it's the Shroud. The Templars seem to want it pretty bad all of a sudden. They must know something we don't. The only thing we know is that we can't go up against Sigma Team alone. Leave that to me. In the meantime, keep a low profile. Let the Initiate continue to sync the data. Owning the railway wasn't enough. Now Starek has bought an omnibus company as well. I suppose he wants to control the neighborhood's workers and keep them under his thumb. Pearl Attaway is Starek's competitor, is she? Perhaps it's time I went into business. And Miss Fry, what are your plans? I studied the history we recovered from the Kenway Mansion's hidden room. I'm off to a certain monument. So the hints you found in the Kenway House lead to the monument. What a wonderful use of your time. Follow me around asking obvious questions. Well, since Henry isn't here, I thought you might enjoy the company. I don't require any company. And Mr. Green is following up on some leads of his own. Oh, yes, Mr. Green. That's a fascinating idea. Oh, please, Mr. Green, come and take a look at this book and stand oh so close to me, Mr. Green. I do not. Well, perhaps you have nothing better to do, but I'm busy protecting the assassins. Are you really? What was it Father used to say? Don't allow personal feelings to compromise the mission. Precisely. Anyway, I'm off. If I find any more wild geese for you to chase, I'll be in touch. Be ever more pleasant for your absence. <laughs> <laughs> This looks familiar. It's in the very top. The key to the vault, and the shroud. Good day, Miss Fry. I'll take that. You will shroud to cement your own power. But what if you cannot control it? And why do you want the shroud? Merely to keep the Templars from having it. 
How like an assassin? To hold the power of eternal life, and yet be too afraid to use it. Eternal life? Is that what you think the Shroud offers? What I think is no longer your concern. <laughs> Coming with me? I have other plans. <laughs> Miss Attaway. Yes, may I? Oh. Splendid. You're here to murder me. I what? No matter. Everyone has a prize. Is this enough? I'm not here to kill you. And what's your game? Mr. Starrick and the Milner Company have blocked your ambitions long enough. I have a business proposition for you. Wonderful. Come with me. We have much to discuss, Mr. Jacob Fry. At your service. Truer words were never spoken. Miss Fry, what a pleasant surprise. Hello, Clara. I was just going to check on Lambeth since the asylum's closing. What brings you here? The children in my care have been falling ill. Our usual tonics aren't working. A cane, too. <laughs> Are you certain you're feeling all right? Of course. I am, Miss. Clara! Doctor nearby. Bring her inside. She simply collapsed. Yes, she said the others took tonic, but it didn't work. I should think not. Ever since Elliotson was murdered, the district has been overrun with counterfeit tonics. <laughs> this one needs proper care. But without the appropriate medication, she and the others will quickly decline. What do you need? I need supplies. Plenty of them. And medicine. Some of the less common ingredients are being stolen and sold at auction. I'd be happy to help. Here's the list. Miss Fry. Evie Fry. I'm Miss Nightingale. How do you do? Please hurry. We don't have much time. Atta girl. Enough. These supplies are meant for Miss Nightingale. I'm here to collect them. And they're already loaded on the cart. Please take them. Giddy up! You mean that cart? Yes. Of course it is. Please be careful. Some of those items are fragile.
here now. You're back. And not a moment too soon. I hope you brought the medication I requested. How is she? She will recover. Pablo Nelly, the children. Thanks to you, we can distribute authentic medicine now. But is that a permanent solution? I will petition to have regulations put in place. Lambeth is in your debt. It takes a long time to change things. But I'm not going anywhere, Miss Fry. Malcolm Milner. Starrick's puppet himself. Careful, you twats! This park scene needs to make it to the outway depot. He thinks he can burn my buses. Let's give him a taste of his own medicine. Let's give him the whole damn bottle. <laughs> we'll turn Milner's park scene against him. But I'll need help from my gang. Such entrepreneurial instinct, Mr. Fry. I shall leave you to it. Let's ruffle a few feathers. Do what you do best. That's all I care about. Primed and ready. How's that for a taste? I can see Milner's stock price plummeting already. You're hired. Though I have more business planned for us both. Drop a note to my secretary to make an appointment, and I shall review the next step in our scheme. I don't actually work. Like that. Mr. Fry, I told you to make an appointment. My schedule was open. You're fortunate I like you. Internal combustion engines. Eight small syllables that mean a great deal of money. The engines will be delivered to Milner by train. Secure them for me, and he will be... devastated. Mm. I'll need a second train to pull this off. And I think I know just the man. So we have a deal, Mr. Fry? You're fortunate I like you, Miss Attaway. What do you want, Prime? What makes you so sure I want something? Perhaps I saved you out of the kindness of my own heart. <laughs> Come on, let me tell you about the job. Miller's pulling a lot of cargo there. Just be sure to make the transfer. Give him help. Not what I 
I'm after. The internal combustion engine. The end of horse-drawn transport. <laughs> it's like gazing into the future. And what is the going rate for the future, do you think? Uh, we're not selling them. You're giving them to your contact? You'd be paid all the same. <laughs> Who is this Pearl, anyway? How long have you been working with her? She's a business partner. That's all you need to know. Jacob Darling, do join me. To our fruitful partnership. And to the shiny new engines now in my possession. Back to business. Milner's fled to the Thames, occupied with securing his ferry. It's all he has left. Hmm, protected it with his life, no doubt. The very thing I want you to take. <laughs> Just kill him. That's not your first glass of champagne, is it? Success is more intoxicating than alcohol, Mr. Fry. Then save a glass for me. Now, what would it take to draw out Starrick's paw? The sight of his fairies in flames, perhaps. Now to sink Milner's Enterprise. What the bloody hell? I lost the engines. So this is my comeuppance. Pearl Attaway led me to you, not Staric. And they were gonna gather again. I should never have come between Mr. Staric and Miss Attaway. Family always stay together in the end. What do you mean, their family? You glower too much, cousin. You will get your engines back. Our new motorized buses will bring us both a lot of money. I'll need to arrange proper transport for the engines to get back to my factory. I want you at Waterloo personally to ensure that nothing goes wrong. Of course. May the Father of Understanding guide us. 
today and in all of our future endeavors, cousin. Waterloo Station. Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for the delay. We will get you into the Central Station very soon. Where the hell is that schedule? Central Station's closed. Attaway's orders. You saw these blueprints, did you not? Were you aware of this floor? I need to get to the central station. You and this whole lot. It won't happen until I have my train notices. To run. Someone's bound to find you. Passengers, all trains are being diverted to Central Station. I and how are you? I'm hungry as all hell. But that's Do him me. in. Count me. Meet him. Who did your jokes come? Oh, the hell was that? The life out of here, Tucker. me for sure. <laughs> Not if I make an example of someone first. a shame. Good partnerships are hard to come by. Ours is most certainly dissolved. It's business, Mr. Fry. One does what one must to come out on top. Crawford will not take the news of my death lightly. He can be unpleasant when he's cross. I have sacrificed so much. I don't want to lose my buses.
When coldness or deceit shall slight the beauty now they prize and deem it but a faded light which beams within your eyes when hollow hearts must wear a mask mr steric i told you not to disturb me To break your own to see such a moment I but ask that you remember me that you remember me Crawford. A luster, stripped by the hands of that savage. He must be brought to justice. Pearl would not want justice. Pearl would want vengeance. Your passion is most welcome, Miss Thorne. But we cannot let our emotions disrupt the lawful structures of society. If we do that, the enemy wins. It shall happen in the shadows. Miss Fry will hang from the gallows, and I will flay her brother as he comes to save her. I suppose it must be done. Take no chances. Increase the Templar presence in London. We alone protect this city of light. Yes, Crawford. And then we shall enter the vault and cast aside the shadows together. What have we here? Boiler, this dredge character's meddling will be the death of us. He was loitering around the exchange today asking far too many questions about the bank. Should he discover my plan, you will face a far worse fate than losing your job. Signed, Plutus. So this Plutus is Starek's banker, hmm? I wager Dredge will lead me to him. While you're out and about, do attempt not to destroy modern medicine or the London Transportation Network. Don't make me laugh. Innocent lives hang in the balance. They depend on the city. I'm not the one who let Lucy Thorne walk away. A mistake I intend to rectify immediately. Bus feud ends in blood! I'll take one. Here you go. I say we stop this goodwill towards strangers nonsense and focus on what London really needs. Solid leadership whose hard work will raise everyone up to success. As go the titans of business, so goes the world. You weak fool. Get a job. Best guards money can buy won't do Mr. Dredge any good. ahead of you and walk. Come now, you are barking up the wrong tree, sir. What's 
for the ruckus, I wonder. Now, oh, wait a minute. What the devil is going on over there? I know that voice. Fry. Is that you? Fry! It's a cry. What's that? Jacob. It's me, Sergeant Frederick Appeline. Freddy. Sergeant. Undercover. There's to be a robbery at the Bank of England, I'm sure of it. Robbery? It's a fortress. Mm, the boys at the station thought I was joking. Wouldn't be so funny if it was their life savings. Who's behind it? That's confidential. Oh, come on, Freddy. I can help you. Imagine the headlines. Thieves caught in the act. Abilene Wright all along. Well, I suppose I can fill you in a little. Every fiscal quarter, a branch of the bank is robbed. Never the same branch. The thieves are supplied by... Cockham merchants. Thanks for the info, Freddy. It's Sergeant! And I, I, I'm keeping my eye on you. Hmm. What good is a key if you don't know what lock it opens? I dare say Miss Thorne is in the same predicament. Henry! Mr. Green, here, this is it. This matches a casket owned by the Queen, kept in the Tower of London. It's a fortress. I don't suppose you have any friends there? A guardsman? If you can find him once you're inside? I'll talk to you again when I have the shrub. Thank you for your help. Right, yes. Good luck, Evie. Lots of guards. Predictable patrol routes. Thorn may already be inside. Better stick to the shadows. chest that matches the key. Find it and bring it to me. You're not with the Royal Guard. How many of you are there? Tell me. you've come. That Thorn woman has Templars everywhere, disguised as guards. I think I could pass as one of them long enough to sneak you inside, except the guards out here already know my face. We need to deal with them first. Meet me by the White Tower when you're ready. for the men out here. What's next? Miss Thorne wants me captured. If she sees me in chains, she might let her guard down. Can you make it look convincing? You mean pretend like you're my prisoner? I'll do my best, ma'am. If we get too close, those Templars might realize I'm not one of theirs. Then let's keep our distance. The Templar! 
Arthur's own London assassin. Don't forget it. I found her wandering inside the walls, ma'am. Thought you'd want to speak with her. Welcome, Miss Fry. Do you care to tell me where the shroud is? As you wish. I shall find it without your help. And then I'll strangle you with it. Watch her closely. have murdered me after all. But what good will that do you? The Shroud isn't here. You sought a tool of healing in order to extend your own power. Not mine. Ours. You are so short-sighted. You'd hoard power and never use it when we would better the condition of humanity. I hope you never find the Shroud. You have no idea what it truly can do. Tell me then. No. Take this down. Then I want it sealed until you receive further orders. Miss Thorne. You supplied me with the means to secure London's future. The city thanks you. The Order thanks you. I thank you. But the Shroud can only be worn by one. Therefore, I hereby dissolve this partnership. I promise to endow you with an income into your old age. That is the most I can do. May the Father of Understanding guide you. Yes, what is it? Miss Thorne, sir. What of her? I'm sorry, sir. She is dead. And the key? Where is the key? There was no key found on her body, sir. will be mine, even if I have to raise hellfire to do it. Burn the letter. If only I knew which shipment it was, then I could trace the weapons to their owner. Capital idea, Freddy.
What's he doing here? Show me what you... Oh, you're talking, to wait for the crates to be retrieved. Don't want them tea leaves turned to dust, do we? Protect these crates. Any mistake will cost you dearly. Keep your knickers on. We hear ya. Good, because I ain't repeating myself. Templars. Me to Mr. Plutus. Weapons are here. Same routine as before. If the twopenny opens a vault, we robs it and leaves the money in his storehouse. Look sharp, the boys are waiting. To the Bank of England. Well, what say you? You're not gonna like it. No, see you. I am graced with the Abilene family's robust constitution. Two pennies rob in the Bank of England. <coughs> the governor of the bank. I think I might need to sit down. There's no time for that. Bastard's probably deep in the vault by now. However you get in, I don't want to know. Of course. But do you know how I can get in? The bank is designed to protect England's gold reserves. A fortress guarded under lock and key. There is the bank manager, Mr. Osborne. Only he is allowed free access to the vault. You can spot him near the entrance. And, oh yes, one man keeps a close watch on the vault door. He watches it like a hawk. If he sees you, he's sure to seal it. The guard captain, Gus Howard, knows Tupini well. He is in on this, I'm certain. Mr. Fry, please use discretion. The only way to implicate Tupin is to catch him in the act. Do not jeopardize him. No big displays. This is the Bank of England. If you encounter any trouble, I'll be in the atrium. In disguise. Tupin won't be leaving that vault.
Where is Tupini? Please! I have a family. He's in the vault ogling his priceless paintings. <laughs> You've stolen your last shilling from the people of London. Those animals squander their savings. We are the experts in investment. Nothing would be built or improved. Nothing would rise above the muck without our hand guiding. No creating the future. They benefit as much as they're worth. It is their city, not yours. Without our investments, there would be no city. For the path of the dead. Murder! Murder! Thank goodness the police! We're saved! Arrest them all for robbing the people oh. of England. The Bank of England is closed until further notice. The currency, a laughing stock. Inflation out of control, Tupany brutally murdered. And yet Parliament does nothing. The bill will be defeated, sir. That buffooned Israeli shall be taken care of. It has been arranged, upon my honor. Your honor carries little weight. How dare you, sir! The poor people of this city have suffered enough. Today I granted a significant rise to my staff in order to counter inflation. What? I would supply all of London if I could. Meanwhile, you sit in your club and wax poetic with promises your honor cannot pay. Your family's fortune, however. I wonder what they would offer to keep your record out of the newspapers. 
About the same as Disraeli would offer. For your balls, I wager. But let's be generous. Why limit ourselves to one or the other? When we can have it all. What say you, sir? <laughs> Shall I come collect? No more dallying. The halls of Parliament must be free to govern. Again. Understood? You may see yourself out. Dear Mr. Starrick, men hired, strike tomorrow. Disraeli's death will stall Corrupt Practices Act indefinitely. Gladstone will be far more pliable. May the father, etc., etc., be. So Starrick's got his finger in politics, has he? I need to enter the Sinopian Club and find out who B is. Tread delicately around Parliament. As if I don't usually. Your indiscretion at the Bank of England caused British currency to nearly collapse. Nearly is the operative word. Speaking of collapses, what of the key you found that unlocks very little? Henry took it for research. I am confident that the vault is ours. Nearly ours, Evie. Nearly. All right, B. Who are you and what's your game? So the Russians thought they had us cut off. Come on. Now, a lesser commander would have thrown his hands up and surrendered. Mediocre one. Well, if it isn't my dear old chum, Mr. Disraeli. Now, Prime Minister, which of your friends is about to stab you in the back? The Corrupt Practices Bill is a vital step in reforming our government. If the majority party is allowed to dictate the results of contested elections, stop. we can scarcely call ourselves free. If we yield up our rights bit by bit to the courts, we can scarcely we call ourselves free. But you are insignificant. You're glad to be invisible. I'm insignificant. You would rather throw your body upon the gears and thrones than surrender one iota of power. By God, just really, you are a fool. I'll not stand idly by and watch you drag parlimentary privilege through the muck. No, certainly not. You'd rather return us to the yoke of tyranny. Perhaps while we're at it, Mr. You won't Gladstone, be laughing when you we do can the repeal Magna Carta and return the crown to the bloody stirrups! How dare you, sir? Hey, who do you think you are? Merely because I, I do not wish to see government to law placed in the hands of judges who make the slanderous accusations. I'm not interested. I'll not stand for it. Then I shall obviate the requirement. Good evening, sir. I presume. <laughs> ah! Pleasure to meet you. B. B. My name's Herbert. And why are you following the Prime Minister? It's just a job, sir. Some old bloke paid me. To
Bloody hell! Where did you come from? Well, I was born in Crawley, but that's by the by. Who are you working for? Oh, uh, I never got his name. Uh, old chap, big moustache, wore some kind of uniform. Who's ours, maybe? What's his game? Please, you'll kill me. And a three-story drop will shatter your legs and send you to the workhouse. Difference is, you can run from him. Tomorrow! Oh, my lads are going to attack the Prime Minister's carriage on the way to Parliament. Perfect. <laughs> What has happened? Your brother. What's he done this time? <laughs> the newspapers are all over Tupany's murder. And if that weren't enough, someone has stolen the currency printing plates. Was that also Jacob's doing? I doubt it. Now, no one trusts the bank or England's currency. There, there will be inflation, riots, manufacturing will jump to America for the cheap labor. In short, Britain is done for. Jacob, you've really put your foot in it now. What if I smuggle the plates back into the bank? Well, it would certainly help. Better yet, it would call into question the stories on Tupany's murder, which would restore confidence in the economy. That's settled then. Britain lives to see another day. Oh, and if it's not too much trouble, would you mind destroying any counterfeit notes you come across so they don't circulate? Of course. Follow me. The counterfeit money is being spent nearby. Well, if you can call it counterfeit, with those printing plates, it's nearly impossible to tell the real notes from the fake ones. Mr. Avalon. If this gets out... Well, I've said this already. When people don't trust their currency, and we're already seeing riots... Mr. Avalon. <coughs> Indeed, I am. I have the utmost faith in you, Miss Fry. to be robbed on my way to the cart. The counterfeiters. Heard about the rioting at the bank? They can riot all they like. We won't be giving back those plates. What difference does it make? It's not like he has any real cash on him. Not where I would hide if I were. Since we've got the printing plates, it's all real cash. Did you hear those crowds? Sounds like all of London is rioting. Nothing to do with us. I can't believe Jacob's managed to shatter the entire economy. Father was right. He acts in haste and repents not at all. Right out. 
Forgive me, sir. I'm a bit slow. Keep your eyes open. Anyone could be trying to get in. Yes, sir. Keep this place locked down. Yes, sir. Guard this place as you would the Bank of England itself. I won't let Absolutely, you sir. Now to sneak these back into the bank. You're out of line, miss! Don't make me cross the street! This is my curiously done. Who's in charge here? There, as if they were never taken. Well, the London papers are running the story of how it was all a hoax. No more riots. Faith in the bank restored. Finally, I might get a quiet night on patrol. Miss Fry, I can't thank you enough. Glad we've averted catastrophe, Sergeant. Although it's Jacob who should be thanking me. So much for the house call. I have to find a way into that carriage. <gasps> What's the meaning of this? Who the devil are you? Prime Minister, I'm your new bodyguard, Jacob Fry. I wasn't informed of any new bodyguard. Who's your commanding officer? Let the boy speak, Dizzy. <laughs> Madam, apologies. But we've learned of a threat on your life. And the Met thought it best to move quickly. Threat? What sort of threat? <gasps> that sort. If you excuse me a moment.
Not so fast, Your Excellency. about Gladstone, young man. I assure you, madam, Gladstone is innocent in this. But he tried to kill my husband. Well, we'll look into Gladstone. Perhaps you can help me with another inquiry, madam. A gentleman with ties to Parliament, older, wears cavalry uniforms and has a large moustache. You seem like a rough and ready sort of fellow, Mr. Fry. <laughs> well, yes, I am, actually. And are you familiar with the poorer districts of our city? Roughly. Wonderful. As it happens, I've been eager to tour the Devil's Acre. If you were to escort me, I'd be happy to assist you in your inquiry. That strikes me as a dangerous idea. Then it's settled. Come back here to Downing Street tomorrow night, eight o'clock sharp. Good day, Mr. Fry. But I... Good day, Mr. Fry. Please tell me again where we are going. I found a letter from the Prince Consort among Lucy Thorne's research, marked with the same insignia as your key, dated 1847. 1847. The same year the Prince began renovations to Buckingham Palace. You think he added a vault for the Shroud? And since there is no map of the palace with the room marked Secret Vault. Your Highness, may I present Miss Evie Fry. Miss Fry, Maharaja Dulip Singh. A pleasure, Your Highness. My friend, the plans you asked for have been removed. Removed? By whom? Crawford Starrick, or someone employed by him. Yes, I thought you might recognize the name. I know where they are, but it is heavily guarded. That part will not be a problem. I thought not. We're going to need a plan. I can provide a distraction for the guards while you find a safe way inside. Oh, really? <laughs> for you, Evie, certainly. Well, once I'm inside, I'll find someone who knows where the papers are stored. And we will be back on the train. Be careful. That's not 
Like I have to ask someone where the plans are. Uh, I swear, miss, I don't know where they've taken him. Taken who? The man, dressed like you. The guards dragged him off. Henry? The plans you stole, where are they? I don't know anything about that. The plans. The mission. You're some of Clara's children. They took Mr. Henry. We couldn't stop them. I bit one of them good, though. They dragged him off in a red carriage. They won't get far, though. One wheel looked like it was about ready to fall off. You can see the cart tracks. It looks so wobbly-like. Driving quickly. There you go. They're knocking people over, too. And destruction of public property. I must be on the right track. I know a dead body when I see one. I could have sworn I'd locked this gate. This is supposed to be locked. Bloody urchins opened it again, no doubt.
knocked him around pretty good. Wouldn't be surprised if it took a while. Send someone to move the architectural plans. Do you have them? Did they hurt you? I'm fine. Let's go. What about the plans? The plans are lost. Oh. 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 Evie, I'm sorry. Just concentrate on escaping, please. Get Miss Nightingale to look at that. I must find the vault before Starek secures the shroud. We'll talk to the Maharaja again. I will talk to the Maharaja. You will get your head looked at. I'm sorry my capture hasn't done your plans. You'd be safer on the train. Even if you find the vault, you can't just walk into Buckingham Palace alone. I won't be alone. I'll see you back at the train, Mr. Green. Madam? Mr. Fry? Ready to take the air? Devil's Acre should just be coming alive. I'm afraid I must cancel our engagement. The lawn is crawling with scandal-hunting journalists, and I simply cannot be seen in the company of someone so... I'll see them off. You follow along when it's clear. Yes, yes. Uh, be gentle, won't you? The press are notoriously touchy about any violence to their person. <laughs> I'll barely ruffle a hair on their heads. Shh, Desmond. That's yours, if you can get those chaps over there to follow me. Right you are, sir. Blimey! Look! It's Squire Bancroft! Best lead them astray before they tear me to shreds. to deal with the Liberals. Now, a drive is in order, I think. I certainly don't intend to walk the entire way to Devil's Acre. Let's go. That's the way. <laughs> Slow down. That's a girl. So, this is a pint, is it? Huh? Remarkable.
Nice doggy. Mm. Good boy, Desmond. Hand over the mutt. You'll change your tune when me and my friends find you. Now then, Desmond, to get you back to your mistress, whom I've just left entirely unattended in one of London's most dangerous pubs. Well, if you never told your father how you felt about him, how was he supposed to know? I never thought of it that way. I suppose deep down we all just want to be loved. Just so. Mm. Here, have a sweetie. Oh, Desmond and Mr. Fry, I'd like you to meet... Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. John the Tosser. Charmed. I think we'd better get you home. Right you are, Mr. Fry. Come along, Desmond. <laughs> Well, well, well. If it isn't the dog walker. <laughs> now, let's not do something we'll regret. Steady on. Who's a good horse? Well, I must thank you for a most energetic and enlightening oh. evening, Mr. Fry. No, thank you, madam. Perhaps now you might tell me about the man in the Hussar's room. <laughs> Quite right. Lord Cardigan is the gentleman you seek. Tiresome man. Always blathering on about his military adventures. Do you know where I might find him for a private conversation? I do indeed. He's in town now, as it happens, campaigning against the corrupt practices bill. Perhaps you could catch him in the Palace of Westminster. Oh, do be careful. Doing fine. The government could ill afford another scandal. I assure you, I'll be very discreet. Your stop, madam. My stop? <laughs> How delightful. Uh, thank you. Thank you for a splendid evening, Mr. Fry. I shall be sure to speak highly of you to Dizzy. <laughs> oh, yes. What's this nonsense about needing a password to see Lord Cardigan today? Relax. I've got it in my pocket. Come now, gentlemen. I thought us united in opposition against this perfidious law. Hey, who do you think you are? God, you love me, Santa Way. There ought to be a law against bad managers. I'll put it down to the government. All punishments are nothing but the economy's working in London and the world's support. Balaclava. Of course it bloody is. Password. Balaclava. Come in. Oh. Now then, <clears throat> let's discuss this like... 
Good God! Who the bloody hell? Oh, shut up. should fall not on the gloried fields of Crimea, but to an assassin's blade in the very halls of power. Are you finished yet? Take your bow, knave, for you have managed what no Russian battery, what no Indian tiger could achieve. Claim your trophy, and may you choke on it. Yes, but do tell me more about Balaclava. Farewell. Farewell, dear Britannia! Your dawn shall be dimmer that the Earl of Cardigan sees it not. God save the Queen and the Eleventh Hussars! What a prick. Disorder. The sea rises to flood the pubs and extinguish the street lamps. Our city will die. Tupane has failed. Lucy has failed. Brudnell Elliotson. Pearl. All have gone into the night. It's up to me now. The assassins have brought nature's fury into our homes. Men have become monsters. Barreling toward us, teeth out. Our civilization must survive this onslaught. prevent a return of the Dark Ages. I will start anew. London must be reborn. Apart from the death squad on our tail, apart from that. Backup's on the way. Why are you pushing yourself so hard? It's not your job to fight Templars. I had this colleague. He was our boss's son. I didn't much care for him at the start. Everyone treated him like he was so bloody special. To me, he just wasn't invested in, in, in anything that didn't affect him personally. But I was wrong about him. He became my friend put himself through hell, and he saved us all in the end. So, I reckon, well, I can't apologize to him, but I can, I don't know, I can try and live up to his example. You are a good assassin. Holy jeez! Hello. It has been too long. Galena! I mean, I have not seen you since we blew up that lab in Paris. Uh, there were many explosions, and you screamed like a baby. Bishop tells me Otzoberg is here. I will kill him for you. Super. Great news. Now, if you wouldn't mind keeping watch, I am going to lie down and die now. Rest. We have a big fight coming. The Peace of Eden is under Buckingham Palace. We've got all we need. Let's start planning our infiltration. Hold on. Better to get visual verification. If we're gonna move, we need to be 100% sure. We'll only get one shot before Otso Burr crashes down on us. Gotta agree with Sean. We'll position ourselves near the palace, but we'll wait for you to sync the genetic data before we move. It's all up to you, Initiate. You're late. Staric is making his move. The Peace of Eden is somewhere inside Buckingham Palace. Let him have it. I've seen your handiwork across the city. Perhaps you should trust my judgment. 
I've been killing Starek's henchmen. What have you been doing? Let's ask Henry, shall we? I have been repairing your mistakes. Too much haste is too little speed. Don't you quote father at me. That's Plato. And I am sorry, this doesn't involve anything you can destroy. Father was right, he never approved of your methods. Father is dead! Enough! I have just received word from my spies. At the palace ball tonight, Starek plans to steal the piece of Eden, and then eliminate all the heads of church and state. Once more, for old time's sake. And then we're finished. Agreed. So what's the plan? Such an unexpected delight to visit you both. What is the news on the street? Mrs. Disraeli, we have discovered that there is something inside Buckingham Palace that could threaten the... <laughs> what my sister's failing to say is that we require entrance into the ball tonight. <laughs> Impossible! Even if there were any invitation cards remaining, which there are not, uh, someone of your lowly station... If that damn fool Gladstone is attending this evening, they can have my card. Perfect. Then I'll go alone. Mrs. Disraeli, if you'd be kind enough to inform my darling brother of the location of the Gladstone's residence, perhaps he could use his considerable skills to commandeer their cards. <laughs> what fun! Did you hear that, Dizzy? We're going to pinch the Gladstone's invitations. Thank you for volunteering me, sweet sister. Oh, a pleasure, brother, dearest. Now, Mrs. Disraeli, if you would excuse me, I must visit with the Maharaja. It occurs to me that he may have a second set of plans to a certain vault. Delighted to see you again, Miss Fry. Your Highness, the plans detailing the renovations to Buckingham Palace have gone astray. I suppose you will have to make do with the copies. There are copies? Where? Uh, not so fast. First, I have a matter of some urgency. Carrying out my plan would require stealth and speed, qualities I know you possess. Time is of the essence, Your Highness. Then make this quick, my dear. The most influential men in Parliament remain beyond my reach. But these very men have sent for carriages to prepare for the ball tonight. Acquire an official carriage, and we shall drive the politicians to their destinations. Along the way, I will meet with them. And afterward, I shall tell you where to find the plans. You're a shrewd negotiator. One must be when one is so often underestimated. Don't allow personal feelings to compromise the mission. What a mistake. Come on. Go on. Easy, girl. Now, where can they be? The ball is tonight. They must have taken the invitations with them. happened to have seen two carriages pass by here just now. I did, sir. One with a man in it, the other with a woman. They split up. Where did the man go? That way. Thank you. Shall we lobby our cause, Miss Fry? 
Climb up, Your Highness. Where are we headed? Belgrave Square. A private party event. Don't mind if I do. My son is anticipating my arrival. Welcome, sir. Your Highness, what a surprise. <laughs> is life not about embracing the unexpected? I shall take but a few moments of your time. A matter of utmost importance must be discussed. When the Commonwealth seized the Punjab from my people. It was not a seizure, but a rightful transaction. Britain promised to protect me. By robbing me of my kingdom, Parliament acted in violation of the treaty signed with my family. Here, read it. I... Uh, I was not aware. Read. That is all I ask. You are one of the few in a position to help. I will do what I can. Thank you, sir. I trust you and your son will enjoy the ball this evening. He is newly returned from Delhi. I will share what we have discussed. It is most disconcerting. I'll fight you for that girl. That proved quite valuable. Where to now? St. James's Park. I noticed Mr. Green did not accompany you. He has other things to attend to. Ah, a pity. You two seem to get along nicely. Well, that was a problem, you see. One must not allow personal feelings to compromise one's mission. That sounds like a quotation. It is. From my father. Ethan Fry. You knew him? No, unfortunately. But Mr. Green spoke of him. He sounded like an extraordinary man. He was, Your Highness. And your mother as well, Cecily Fry. She and your father were partners, inseparable. The only duo that came close to challenging Mr. Starrick. And very much in love, at least from the small amount I have been told. Cecily. I wish I could have met her. From what Mr. Green gathered, you share much in common. Your intelligence, for one. Father never spoke of her. What would Mr. Green know? He was only a boy when he trained with my father. Children can be quite perceptive, Miss Fry. Mrs. Gladstone's under guard. Better be cautious. Better wait until she's alone. Now is my chance. One should not attend the Queen's Ball without making a proper entrance. Now for the invitations. 
What's this? Swords must be left at the door by order of the Queen. Freddy will know what to do. To Parliament, please. On the double. Yes, sir. Good day, sir. Why, what are you doing here, Your Highness? I know how busy your days have been of late. A few moments of your time is all I require. This is all rather unorthodox, but continue. Britain was to protect me according to the treaty my family signed. Instead, she took my land. And now I hear Britain intends to strengthen her ties to India. Perhaps it is time to return the Punjab to her people. The Queen has supplied you with an annual income for God knows how long, and now you bite the hand that feeds you? It is not a matter of money. I cannot stand idle and watch my homeland subjected to the yoke of an outsider's rule. My people are treated as slaves. I will die poor a thousand times over if only to see them free. Your passion moves me, Your Highness. What would you have me do? Take this copy of the wrongful treaty and defend my claim to the throne. Help disengage the Punjab from British rule. I shall speak up, but I am only one voice. I cannot promise anything but a show of support. That is more than enough. Thank you, sir. My pleasure, Your Highness. Good day, sir. May God bless you. <laughs> Only one more remains. To the Gladstone residence. Keep moving. Whoa, easy. <laughs> Quite a carriage you got there. Where did you buy it, if, if you don't mind me asking? Ask all you want, Freddy. You'll never get an answer. Damn it all. Was it my eyebrows? Yes, and your face, voice, and body. Look, I've got an invitation to the Queen's Ball tonight. How did you come by that? Freddy, there's to be an attack on the ball. I need to smuggle some weapons inside to prevent it. Supposing I believe you, only the Royal Guard carries weapons. So? Too easy. For God's sake, Freddy. Fine. I require a guard's uniform. Done. I knew you'd come through. Just promise me, Jacob, that you will return Mr. Gladstone's coach. Of course. To the Sinopian Club, straight away. Good day, Mr. Gladstone. Mr. Singh! You are a hard man to pin down. I know what this is about. Your politics have worn off. The Majesty has tired of you. So now you come begging for scraps. You wound me deeply, sir. My people deserve freedom. I am here to fight for them. Why did you lose the Punjab? I shall tell you, Your Highness. You were outgunned, outmaneuvered, and simply outclassed. Yes, the Sikhs deserve freedom. I hope with British help and progress, they shall achieve it. Then why do they cry out for their king? Britain has a duty to bring about peace. It is an enormous responsibility, and I value your guidance and advice, along with that of Parliament. But it's our burden to rule India and certainly not the duty of a forgotten leader who has not seen his country for 20 years. I apologize for being so frank, but one must not tell lies to a king. Your honesty is most enlightening. When I become prime minister, I intend to push for peace, but it will be a long and slow process. And I am afraid I can almost guarantee you will never see India again. If my people are free, then my imprisonment shall be no burden. Perhaps your idealism is real. Although, after observing the tigers wandering the grounds of your lush, expensive estate, forgive me for doubting it.
Much luck, Your Highness, with your lobbying. I hope my advice has done some good. Far more than your policies thus far. But I hold out hope that you will make progress. My people are counting on it. Thank you, Miss Fry, for forwarding my cause. Oh, you are welcome. I hope some good comes of it, despite Mr. Gladstone's vitriol. Those of us with the largest hearts protect them the most. Your father, for instance. From what I understand, he was extraordinarily sad, broken even, after your mother's passing. That kind of pain can blind us, cause us to say outlandish things to protect the ones we love. It's time you returned this carriage and recovered those plans. They are located in Buckingham Palace. The Queen keeps them among her personal papers in the white drawing room. I wish you a good evening, Miss Evie Fry. And to you, Your Highness. One uniform as requested. It's still warm. My gift to you? I will meet you on the roof of Buckingham Palace. You're such a romantic. Of course he'd arrive in that. Miss Fry? Hand him your weapons. We must enter an armed. Sir, madam. Dear me, I am soon to become a prime minister. What in the blazes is our carriage doing here? Did I hear something? No, just the voices in your own head. And yet, they are so much more pleasant than yours. Charming. Aren't I? The plans are located in the white drawing room, which is most likely locked. The captain of the guard will have a key. You are going to squish. Keep your mouth closed, and this will be over before you know it. Who are you? The lady is with me. Much obliged. Madam? Pleasant dreams. The plans are somewhere nearby. and rescue the captives. There you are! 
<laughs> I have someone I'm simply dying for you to meet. Uh, do, 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 do. come with me. Your Majesty, may I present Miss Evie Fry? You're the one responsible for Mr. Gladstone's mishap. Your Majesty, I apologize. I... The cake is particularly good. Enjoy the ball. I really must be going. Miss Fry, may I have this dance? Mr. Starrick, we've had your fun, but the game is over. Uh -uh. Listen. One, two, three. One, two, three. Time is a wonderful thing, Miss Fry. It heals all wounds. We may make mistakes while dancing, but the mazurka ends, and then we begin again. Problem is, everyone forgets. They trip on the same mistakes over and over. People can learn. Can they? Isn't everyone around you repeating the same steps? But if one man could remember the dance, could know the time, then he could change things for the better. I have had enough. This dance is nearly over. Soon, the people will forget the generation on this terrace. The ruin you nearly wrought on London. When the music ceases, Miss Fry, your time is up. And mine begins. Assistance. I never liked balls. <laughs> Here, the location of the vault. Go. Just like that? No plan? No time for plans. I'll catch up as soon as I'm rid of this infernal contraption. Exploiting, I warn you, my boy. But you do not listen. Requiem's cart and pace. by my mistake. I admire... Come closer, my... 
London will perish without me. You flatter yourself. I would have created a paradise. The city belongs to the people. You are but one man. I am at the very top of the order. You were, Mr. Starrick. <laughs> you were. we won't be partners anymore. It's for the best, isn't it? Are you gonna wear the shroud and run London? Whatever it gives, it takes from someone else. You'd continue to age without me. You'd become like father. A fate worse than death. Will you wear it? After you sorted out the boroughs, the chaos I caused, I couldn't compete. Jacob Fry stepping back. Who's blackmailing you? Is it George? He wouldn't dare. <laughs> I've missed you. Me too. Would it be possible to continue where we left off? I'd love nothing more. I'm starting to think Father didn't know everything about everything. <laughs> Henry. It's a big world out there. With London in the center. Perhaps not the very center. I came as soon as I could. Do not worry. I'll... I'll head back to the train. Did I... Did I jeopardize the mission? Henry, you saved it. I think you belong in the field. With me. A carriage. Nicely done, Freddy. Mr. Aberline, please. Your Majesty. Miss Fry. You've met before? Did I never mention? Mr. Aberline informs me that you three are responsible for saving my life. Is this true? It is, Your Majesty. Evie Fry, step forward. And you? My brother, ma'am. Jacob Fry. And this is Mr. Henry Green. Mr. Fry? Mr. Green? Neil?
Arise. I invest you all in the Order of the Sacred Garter. Thank you, Your Majesty. If you are as adept as Mr. Abilene implies, I may call on you. Sergeant Abilene tends to exaggerate, Your Majesty. We shall meet again. And Miss Fry. Ma'am? Should you want it? I saved you some cake. <laughs> Father would be proud of you. <laughs> Dame Evie Fry. <laughs> Sir Jacob Fry. <laughs> Race you to the train. You're on. That's it. It's under the palace. Time to go. Let's get the shroud to Dr. Grammatica immediately. Sigma team beat us here. We're too late. What do we do? Killing really is the least productive way to achieve our goals. Kill them all. Leave them on the Contact! Cover me! That skinny piece of shit tried to murder me, Berg. I want them him to that bleed. Whispered dreams that are poisoned us, them that told us lies of their bravery, them that preached of progress and put us in the poor house. Them done the horrid murder on bloody stages that loudly corrode their humility. Lords and dames and sons in chapels on a summer. All quiet now, their mouths are stopped up. Hold still, goddammit! Play alive, flung in rats and make no sound. Only the mission matters! Understood! Those who fought Sean! for something better Those who fought by how they live Loved ones taken long before this world Galena, we need an exit! Targets are righteous. We need to go now. Understood. Shroud. Forget the bloody shroud. Stay with me, Bex. Please. We go. Good work in there, Initiate. In time, we will recover the Shroud. And hey, we pulled a feed from our bug in Isabel's computer before they shut us out. Playing it now. Sorry about the mess. <laughs> so, how's the Shroud gonna help you create a new clone? It's not. And the shroud is wrapped around the body. It scans it for damage and then reconstructs it on a cellular level. You're now making a clone. You're gonna recreate a precursor from scratch. Bingo! The Phoenix Project timetable just got accelerated big time. I'm going to call Alan Rick and deliver the good news. <laughs> it's like Christmas! <laughs> Oh. 
Hello? It's me? I brought the shroud as you asked, but... I'm scared. Do not fear me. You've done well. I'm not scared of you. I'm scared for you. Anyone finds out what you've been doing. You have played your part, my instrument. I will save you. I will save you all. Take a look around lively old London. Buzzing crowds, we sweat and we revel. Red cheek shouts and songs in the flicker of the gaslight. Eager blighty bursts from the cobblestones, racing, climbing, blooming fertility, born from secret seeds that are scattered in the night time. London is fed upon the meat of the dead. They're one shallow inch below the town Underground, underground Leave them underground Them that whispered dreams that only poisoned us Them that told us lies of their bravery Them that preached of progress and put us in the poorhouse Them done horrid murder on bloody stages Them that loudly crowed their humility Lords and dames that sung in the chapels on a Sunday all quiet now, their mouths are stopped up by mud. They lie flung in rags and make no sound. Underground, underground, leave them underground. Those who fought for something better Those who taught by how they lived Loved ones taken long before their work was done Underground, underground Leave them underground Underground, underground Leave them underground Underground The chase is underway Today we brag A different kind of prey Hear the bugle call We're feasting on a lord Today If you're eyeborn and well mustachioed You may expect a gutting in the road Hear the bugle call, are you the next to fall To quench the killer's sword today? We're feasting on a lord today It seems in England we have two lords One for the rich, another for the poor But if your bobbies come a-knocking at our doors You best prepare to get a knock on yours a hooded guest you'll greet in your salon A silver tray to serve your carcass on Uncork the Beaujolais and watch the scarlet spray We'll guzzle and we'll gorge today We're 
feasting on our Lord today.